Hello, everybody. I think I'm ready to get started. So we are on the final case of Justice for All. I believe we were just shy of starting the first trial. I think I gave my theories as to how the rest of the case was going to pan out. Last time that we played. And now I'm only really checking at the moment my notes to see if there's an achievement. Looks like there is. So that is about the only clue I'm going into the rest of the game with. I 1000% do not recall this trial. Other than it annoyed me. And it looks like I can get a special achievement involving Old Bag. So let's go ahead and name for that. So let's pause that and let's proceed. It also appears that we have hit just over 500 followers. It looks like it's going on about seven days since we had 500. So thank you everybody for the support. Now let's hop into the game itself. March 22nd, 9.47 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby number three. I'm going to do one thing to make sure I can view the chat easier. There we go. Let's go Phoenix Blind. I mean, to be fair, it wouldn't be any different than the way Phoenix handles his other cases. <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing. Adrian did it. That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. The woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer, dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, all right? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Oh, jeez, don't remind me about her. Mia. We must get a complete acquittal today. I know. But I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Let us get going. Beep, 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 chat. It's him. Beep. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit... How shall we say? Hi. Don't worry, people don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why... I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Wait! Beep. The kidnapper sent me a present. Mr. Lawyer, dude, who was that? Uh, um... No one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Calling us out. The Pinocchio lies. March 22nd, 10 a.m. Just a court crew number, well, number three. Take a quick drink. We got a lot of talking to do. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ungard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. Dot, 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 as no one's at the prosecutor's side. I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I, I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor. Please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? 
Prosecutor. Uh, Prosecutor Von Karma has. This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. What? Shot? Somehow. I think this is the present that man was talking about. I mean, it's probably for the best she got shot, let's be honest. <laughs> I, I feel like she's more of a criminal than some of the people that we've had on stand so far. Shot just like her father, pretty much. His present. Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. Th this, this is totally insane. Uh, Miss Von Karma, is she all right? I don't have that answer. Hmm. Given who's answering, I'm going to guess this is Edgeworth. She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Whew. Y y you're... I thought he'd show up. Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Miss Francesca von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready, naturally. Oh no, gavel banging there? Interesting. Miss Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Now it's very much like her father. Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. The, the court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Dot 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 exclamation mark from ourselves. Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Witness. Your name and occupation. M my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. <laughs> For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. D detective Gumshoe? The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. <laughs> there you go. That's a line. Lift your head and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah, it would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Bare facts of the case, witness testimony. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Carita, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Okay. He was killed by the murder. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room. Yes, sir. Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Bare facts of the case. Okay, so we have to go into panic mode, chat. What do we have to do to solve this case? Let me think about this. Let's look at our evidence. Let's refresh my memory. What do we have? I notice we don't have an autopsy report. Okay, so goal, goal number one, we need autopsy report. Uh, what else did he say that was suspicious? I guess him ruling out the guitar case in case he presents another piece of evidence. 
So I don't think I care about the murder happened. The, we know about the victim. If you're looking to the cause of death, we believe is definitely murdered. Uh, yeah. Let's see if we can at least get the murder weapon and at minimum the autopsy with this. Let's press this. Hold it! The cause of death. Wasn't that because Mr. Corita was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now a real pro's attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Hmm. Bandana. Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Oh, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then, <laughs> judge being senile as usual. Then what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the... Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> it seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm. We have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Autopsy report added to the court record. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So, we had surmised that he potentially was stabbed afterwards as a setup, but that wasn't the real murder weapon. So, we got confirmation that he was strangled with his scarf. So I think this is checking along the lines of what I was expecting. So we're good here. So we still need the potentially at first to be pressed because we need him to present evidence or if this opens up another line, we're going to press that. So whatever happens first, I guess. Hold it. And why do you think that? Because it was empty, pal. The Jammin' Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How is that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Aw, oh, so much for my theory then. The judge has bad hearing, like the first killer is bad eyesight, probably. Guitar case, empty. There's some water, but only the t at the top of the lid. Bear's card is fingerprints. Okay, did that update the statement? Oh. No, but we still have this one to talk about the nothing to do. So I pressed the wrong statement, but that's fine, because that gave us evidence anyway. Okay, let's see what this gives us. Hold it! What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Carrera, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. <laughs> right? Hmm. Yeah, hmm <laughs> from the judge indeed. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Matt, and Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edward's back in full swing. Very well, Detective Gumshoe. Please testify about this murder. Y yes, sir. Excuse me. Why arrest on guard? Matt on guard and Juan Carrera were huge rivals with each other. They each thought that the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off the costume. It was found in Mr. Angard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife.
the defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Where's the victim's blood and on guard's fingerprints in the grip Gatewater is engraved? Hmm. Okay, so I, I'm gonna guess because we need to, well, it, in a weird way, the crime is premeditated. It's just not in the way that he thinks. So I have to kind of undo the thought process that yes, it's premeditated, but I have to disprove that Matt on guard did it premeditated. So I think with the fact that it says Gatewater on it would prove that he didn't have the knife before he went there. I'm going to guess that's the angle the game wants me to go for. What's our other piece of evidence, presumably? I was going to say, they, he, it, I'm going to see if the button has anything on it, but I, I don't think it's relevant so far. And there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, what's it? Hmm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? Demon Ninja's button added to the court record. Was ripped from his costume, is covered in Karita's blood, found on a guard's Sakama. So, I have a feeling that'll come up later in the trial, where I'm trying to prove that the evidence was planted, but right now I don't think this is helpful to me, so we'll ignore this piece of evidence. All of this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, your honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Hmm, I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. Gah. Hmm. Let's look over our evidence one more time. And then I'll make my decision. So what else do we have that's relevant to this? That's not relevant yet. Press conference ticket doesn't matter at the moment. We're definitely not going to show the radio transceiver. Lotus camera is not relevant now because she's not testifying slash old bag is not testifying. Magazine clipping doesn't matter yet. It's good to know the layout of the hotel for later, but not relevant. We got the guitar case, the wine glass. Now next to the victim, it's filled with tomato juice. No sign it's been drank. Hmm. Okay. So let's at least go to his statement where he talks about the defendant, not the fingerprints. Yeah, let's present the knife and hopefully Phoenix will figure out the rest. Otherwise, I'll press and do it again. I'm going to hope I don't need to press the statement. Let's present it. Objection. Wait a second. What? So the basis of your argument that this was premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Oh, did he? Oh, he said bought? I thought he said brought. Oops. <laughs> well, okay. Well, that makes it even easier then. So same line of logic. I misread. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Gumshoe, it's the name of the hotel. You're you gotta be kidding me. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is he, like 10? <laughs> he, he just uh-ohs in court. Like, what? I would slam the desk too on that one. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel, which means this murder was not premeditated. Which, again, I, I don't, I 1000% don't agree with this, but we gotta go with the game's logic for now. I don't agree with this. I would mumble mumble too. Bang. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> uh. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? 
I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There's no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't... Oh... The question is... Where did this knife come from? Why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Karita's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is atop the table. There is a knife and fork on the table. Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt on guard. Yep, with the knife missing. Mm -hmm. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife. We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Angard's knife was missing. Uh... Mr. Angard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife to visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. Bang. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. Bang. A murder weapon with fingerprints, and a button from the victim's costume. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Not yet shown to the court? Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. Oh, oh, are, are, are we just taking evidence law and crumpling it into a ball, chat? I'm shaking my head, chat. How, how can we present evidence unless it's been cleared by the police? We talked about this. <laughs> chat, I think that was rule number one to evidence law. Oops. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well, Phoenix. The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. We answer with something wrong here. That gavel of his will be ringing out to the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Well, I mean, I'm going to do actually I do, because presumably I do have something. I have to think about this, though. There's one. Dot dot dot. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something this court is yet to see. They only bring out the evidence law whenever they feel like it. I mean, is is the police department approving this? I'm as I said before, I'm pretty sure that was rule number one. Rule number two had to deal with relevancy of trial, if I recall correctly. I mean, they don't usually follow it, but it is what it is. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I'm giving you one chance, and only one. What the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtains for all of us. You may now present one, and only one piece of evidence. Hold on, Chad, I have to do something very important.
we got one piece. Oh. Did the bot die? Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad, chat. The bot is dead. Long live the bot. <laughs> it apparently forgot commands or something. Oh, well, we did get one piece, though. Yo, 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 chat. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Okay. So it's not going to be the photo. It can't be the press conference ticket. It won't be the radio transceiver. It can't be Lotta's camera yet. Magazine clipping is probably for the end. I'll tell guide map no. Guitar case was technically already presented. So that leaves the wine glass. The crime photo they technically already showed. And the suicide reports don't make sense. Juan's autopsy report doesn't make sense. Knife doesn't make sense. So if we were to eliminate literally everything that is shown in court outside of things relating to a character we haven't introduced, I'm going to say the wine glass is here to say that he didn't have his last meal, question mark. I'm guessing that's where we're going with this because he didn't finish drinking and it's also in a different position. So let's go with this logic and hope this is correct. Take that. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken. His makeup is all over the floor. Yeah, and the wine didn't tip over. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, what do you all have to say? Oh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth, what is it, your honor? Your opinion? You don't need my opinion, because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? Uh. I wish I could see the layouts of the room one more time. I don't remember there being a bottle of this in their room. I think it's only in the victim's room, so she would have had to have gone into his room and pour the drink. I think that's where this logic train is going. So let's go ahead and say there's no way, because I think it had to have been poured in that room. So let's say there's no way. If I appear weak here, the trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. <laughs> I, I love how she's like, yes, lie, lie to the court. You don't know what you're doing. Thanks, Mia. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm, you've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Oh, are we asking for fingerprints instead? Sure. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then, of course it has been thoroughly inspected for fingerprints. 
fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims, nor the defendants. Rather, they were of Adrian Andrews. Okay, I think this is just proving my other theory more correct, so sure. What? Bears Andrews' fingerprints. Okay, so we could potentially use this to incriminate her later. So, even though Phoenix feels like he's put in the corner, I'm like, okay. Things are lining up for my original theory. That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Ugh, can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corita. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you said makes a lot of sense. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Now, do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenario, as it explains everything all too well. Yeah, but what if... What if the scenario is she did it, Edgeworth? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that's just a massive hole in your, <laughs> your testimony. As in, she stabbed him and put the glass there. Not that she committed the murder. Uh, I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. From here on out, I will show you the answer I've come to discover. Oh, wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution is yet another witness we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? So, according to Phoenix Light right logic, we would have lost the case already? Only Edgeworth lets the trial continue? Welcome, Dango. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Dot dot. Dot dot. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Rata tata tata. Huh. Gotcha. Uh. Wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, edgy boy. It's been, what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under the helmet? It was the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand. I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm going to tell you anything and everything. Even things that don't have to do with that terrible crime. What happened to his composer? He got shot. Pretty much. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. He got shot by the witness, apparently. Shush, I'm talking to my dear Edgy Wedgie right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, madam. No, no, no. By all means, interrupt her, please. <clears throat> anyway, witness your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth and hot... That youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? This game gives Quartz a bad name. Is it because they got shot through the- oh. See? I read the bottom line, then I went up a line. Oldbag is to blame. And then we gotta do a long guitar solo afterwards. <laughs> I was like, I saw it, I was like, oh. You did make that reference. Oldbag says, It was a great job, being able to see my dear Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to bear. You mean, you were a fan of the victim? Uh, 
Look, everyone is crazy over that Ungard, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. Welcome, Sir Rob. Hope you're doing well. Not sure if you could say long. Well, always glad to have you, Rob. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man. Juan Corrida. Um, but those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Here we go, chat. What she witnessed. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure I kept a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard, Matt on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hmm. So Mr. Ongard came out from the victim's room. See, it has to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Well, I mean, if this is literally like the other game's previous case, and along the lines of how I thought the case was going to turn out, she probably just saw the costume. So I'm just going to press with the it was on guard statement. Yeah, yeah. This one. Time to press. Hold it! You saw my client. Are you sure about that? Yes, see. Really? Annoying brat! When I say I saw someone, I saw that person! Why don't we get a sense of deja vu? Well, you see, Phoenix, when the writers run out of ideas, they repeat what was in a prior game and try to pass it off as new material. Because <laughs> that literally happened. It's the same thing. Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year. Should delve into this a bit further. Uh, well, I think with that, we're going to say... It could be the person's face or the person's clothes. If I could get her to say it's a full costume, it's the same as though I'd asked the person's face. So I'm going to start with the person's clothes, maybe, and then if that doesn't work, I'll do the person's face. Let's choose this one. Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. Hmm. Or if she also misidentifies his outfit, that would also prove as evidence. So I think this would give us more either way. Anyway, let's see what she answers. What a troublesome man you are. Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, now what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing. That racing jacket. That racing jacket? Ah, he's wearing that at the detention center too. That thing's meant for nothing but seduction... Or nothing... Let's try this again. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Hm, men. Um, right. So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Okay. Hmm. Let me think. I guess maybe I can tie it back into the Jammin' Ninja button, because 
he was allegedly wearing the hakama. So if she says that he wasn't wearing his stage outfit, which is what I think happened in the first place, I can prove she lied about it, because otherwise how would it end up in the hakama? So I think this is relevant. I'm gonna say this was... important. Of course it was important, your honor. Objection! Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be appended to her testimony. Hmm, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but all right. Witness, please. Ah, oh, well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... Okay, so. Let's present the badge here, as I believe this will enter the contradiction. Objection! Objection. Miss Oldbag. What? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? Ah, it's button number two on the Gemma Ninja's costume. Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Give it here. Give it here. If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this. rat a tat 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 chat Wow. She really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Ungod's body during a full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt. It was that rascal on God. It was caught up in the pleats of his Nickel Samurai Hakama pants. See, see, and on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Witness. Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination. But just now, didn't you say that the defendant, Matt on guard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? Oops, she put the helmet on. Dot, 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 dot. Ah, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I were the, were the trainees dressed, then maybe think I was the most gorgeous woman ever. But anyway, I have to keep wearing this ridiculous outfit. This outfit is hideous, right? I've got to take a great over trust. Let me tell you, it's heavy. So heavy, you should have switched CDs ages ago. But I've kept this room life for all the kids out there. I have a smile on my face. So do you understand? And take a look in the mirror. The clothes are about as interesting as documentary and curling. You should take a tip or two from Edgeworth. He's got a lot to teach you, I think is what she said at the end. Gosh, her lines are so fast. Anyway. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Now hold your tongue still there for one second. So what you saw in actuality... Let's see what Rob said. I'm glad that even though Francesca isn't here, there's still a lady threatening you with violence in the courtroom. I mean, it's kind of been the theme of basically every case this, this particular game. So I'll agree with you on that one, Rob. It's not a courtroom until somebody gets threatened with death and or brings in illegal items directly to the witness stand. Oh, anyway, so it's not Mr. On Guard, the man... But, Mr. On Guard, the Nickel Samurai, it's when you think about it. Bang. They're really one and the same anyway. Miss Oldbag, this is a very important point we're talking about. Edgy Poo, don't you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important to agree with me for a change. Bang, chat. Witness. Think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Uh, all right, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. Okay. So, I am aware that there's an achievement at some point in her testimony. And that's all I know. The re I still have to figure out the rest out. So, let's see. Who I saw. Let's read. On guard. On guard. Yes, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai, that's right. It was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Okay, so if I press this, apparently we'll get a new achievement, but that doesn't solve the case, so let, let's keep going. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show, right after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. Hmm. 
Okay. I... I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy, thinking such rude things. But... But the possibility does exist. Ah, oh, youngins today. I told you, there's no way it was anyone else. How do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Okay, so let's press that statement, and then I'll make a decision. So presumably I have to... I mean, inevitably, I want to point towards the fact that it was Adrian Andrews in the costume. So I have to present something on one of the statements. Just let me think about it while we get there. All right, so let's press on this and see what we get here. Hold it. Hold it. Be a little more careful with your testimony, please. Not too long ago, you said he was wearing his racing jacket, and now he's not? Not too long ago. And let me ask you this. When you were itty bitty, what was your grand dream? Huh? What did you want to be when you grew up, whippersnapper? My dream, huh? Well, I, uh, wanted to be Judge Wagner, hero of the public's court. So what? The achievement is called Judge Wagner. Now that makes sense. See? And look at where you are now. You're not Judge Wagner, are you? Are you? Well, what I said earlier, who puts any weight into things like that? Uh, everybody, because you're testifying in front of a court? And now is everything. I can't be held responsible for the past. Since when did court become theatrics over testimonies? Phoenix, literally every case. All that matters is the man was inside the costume. Isn't that enough? Okay. And he was stabbed. Okay, so... I mean... I'm trying to think about it from the Phoenix Wright perspective. So I, I need to pin the blame on Adrian Andrews. Is his cost Does his costume wear gloves? It does. Okay. So then, then I think I'm good. So if he was wearing the costume, he couldn't have possibly done the stabbing because why else would there be the fingerprints on it if he would, did it at the time of the murder? So I think this will open up a gap in her testimony. So I'm going to believe in this and I'm going to present this. So let's go ahead and present the knife. Objection! Objection. Please take a look at this. Yes, yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No, no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to the case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I'm driving at. What are we driving at? And whose car are we driving? I feel like the judge is like one week from being put in the senior home chat, I'm just saying. <laughs> Mr. Ongar really was in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder. Then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints of this knife right off. Bang. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? Objection. Objection! He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. Objection. Objection! And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There's no way he would do something like that. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in the costume as the Nickel Samurai. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. 
Hmm. But the murder still did take place. It's well known there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. Hmm, yes, I have heard that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? Let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with this theory? Well, yes, because... If he had no intention to kill, he wouldn't have brought the knife with him. Therefore, we can go back on the it was premeditated on Matt on guard. So the fact that the knife had to come from the other room is the contradiction itself. So I'm going to say there is a contradiction. This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. Well, what are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. On guard was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. So I guess I just present the knife again. I always find it weird in Phoenix when it's like, I hold this point of knife out as evidence, and they're like, where's the proof that the thing you just showed is evidence? And then like the literal next thing that I do is present the same evidence point again. It's not unique to this case, but that has always bothered me in this kind of series of games. Well, I'm going to show the knife again, even though that was the last thing I presented, because Phoenix right logic. Anyway, take that. This knife. This was used by Mr. On Guard at dinner. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was, in fact, the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Karita. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, wouldn't he? Hmm. Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprint shouldn't be all over it. Like bees on a hive. Edgeworth dot dot dots. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Bang, 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 chat. Order, order, I say. Order in the court. Was this knife really planted by the killer? Well, no. No, I don't think so. I still think the other guy, the one who's holding Maya's hostage, committed the murder. Which is why I always get confused in these kinds of games, because I'm like, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but Phoenix doesn't. So it's just kind of awkward when we go through the plot. So I believe it's planted by Adrian Andrews, as per our earlier discussion. So we'll go further, I guess. Why would the murderer do such a thing? Well, the whole case has been about him being framed, so we're going to say to frame Matt on guard. To frame my client, Mr. On guard, of course. To frame... Objection! Aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? Objection! But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Ugh. Witness. Looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult. Huh, edgy poo? Ugh. Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. On Guard with the Nickel Samurai? His character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now. Look, I was waiting around in front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. Dot 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 exclamation mark. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. Alright then, who were you waiting around for then? Hmm, that's top secret to anyone outside of security. 
She's got a gun. Bailiff, take her away. Welcome, Chris. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan Corrida. Am I correct, witness? Ha ha ha. Oh, the way you think. You're a sad amateur with terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? Soulbag was waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corrida. Maybe. Phoenix. Maybe the old bag was waiting for that person. Oh, the classic that. Hmm. It's who I think Mia's hinting at. It's certainly possible. Miss old bag. You were waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Well... I mean, I still gotta establish Adrian Andrews, so I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> I mean, if I did Celeste Impacts, that would be pretty impressive if she showed up there. Let's go ahead and incriminate her. Take that! Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Unguard's manager. But, but why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems this is the latest rumor in circulation, your honor. <laughs> this person, my badge, pretty much. Hmm. Oh, this is... Well, this is... Hmm, hmm. Ah, oh, I see. Jet seems to be really into the article. If it could be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA. Are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews. Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hmm. Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff then. Ooh, witness, what in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. It's old bag. This testimony is going to take like 90 years. <laughs> Right, chat? I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. But what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you, youngins. Sure, we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're 10 years old. <laughs> I was just making the 10-year-old comment earlier about <laughs> Gumshoe. I'm not entirely convinced. Witness testimony, secret information. That Angard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret, you got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? Well, I think I could present something there, so I might just immediately do that. Well, or should I press it first? I guess I should press it first. Yeah, let, let's press first. So I'm thinking the answer is to present the camera there. But I'm, I'm worried the way it's phrased, the game will be like, oh, no, that's so stupid, and give me penalties. So I guess the worst thing that can happen is I press and don't go anywhere. And then we'll present the camera on that statement. Anyway, let's go back to the, what the judge is saying. The defendant sent his manager. What a distasteful topic for this court. If you remember... Yeah, there should be, I believe... A written article within the case because the camera itself went missing so we got to introduce that to the court at some point what nobody's above gossip and isn't there a saying 
The truth is never pleasant. Never heard of that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth the article proposes is, in fact, baseless gossip. I don't believe that is true, but let's continue. Hmm, but should this be true, then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful. Hillbag seems rather excited right now. That's right. On guard is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth. Well, as the old saying goes, gotta burn old bags with fire. Um... I don't... I don't think that's what... I don't think that's how that saying goes. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. Why are we quoting the danger zone? Why are we quoting that song? Anyway, Chad, apparently it's highway to the danger zone. So let's press her final statement. Because I, I could bring in the fact that the camera is missing, I think, with this particular conversation. Let's press. It's the same name that has in an old Clanopedia that's... Oh, Clanadelphia. That is true. Yes, that was the previous one. That, that was certainly something. Wait! What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet. If that's true, then how do you know about the secret information? Huh? Well, that's because I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. It's a secret. Even you drilled a hole. Even if you drilled a hole into my brain, you'll never find out. When the world did that old bag get such a secret piece of information? I mean, I guess we're saying she took the camera, maybe? So no one else is supposed to know the secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Old Bag? Well, well, why are you looking at me like that? Stop that! Witness. I hate to say it, but this is how you came to acquire your secret info, correct? Present. Take that! The investigative photographer, Lotta Hart. Oh, yes. I remember that mischievous girl. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing. On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outraged <clears throat> impressions about the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, no, no. I said impressions. Then... Then, then everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless. Oops, she outed herself, I guess. Ah, oh, that's it. That's the note. Ah. Uh. Ah! Uh, no, you see. This is something completely different. This is my top secret list of groceries to buy. Hmm. Then you are the one who took Miss Hart's note. I'm a huge fan of wands, that's why. That infamous puffy-haired whippersnapper. She's working with that evil on guard. She said so herself. On guard, I'm his sidekick. She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. Thank you, Kirk, for resubscribing. Hopefully you're doing well. I was only checking what she had written. Oops. I accidentally minimized the chat there. Let me give me one second to fix that. There we go. I view you on two monitors for clarity chat. <laughs> doing all right. Hope you and the chat are doing well. Well, we're getting through the trial so far. No errors yet, but we're still pretty early. Everybody dot dot dots about it, though. Edgy Pooh, you believe me, don't you? Ugh. I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. The power of chat on monitors, exactly. Yeah, I have one one screen where it's just the game and then chat on the other one where I can see how what the stream looks at, but sometimes it could get hidden behind stuff, which is kind of annoying if I don't full screen it properly. 
It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we could overlook this just once. It looks like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? No, we're piling on more pressure. I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a deafening blow to the prosecution. Witness! You said that the only thing you stole was that note. Is this correct? Stole? Why don't you listen more carefully, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it. Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny again? Miss Oldbag. I don't believe the note is the only thing you stole that night. Again, it's just kind of like one of those weird ones where, like, I present the camera and then I present the camera again. That really bothers me from, like, a detective standpoint. Like, it's like I'm still holding the camera that initiated this conversation. And she's like, there's no proof anything else was taken. And then I'm, like, still holding the camera. Like, why, why do I have to present this again? Come on, game. I'm presenting it again. Take that. Rolling my eyes the whole time. Miss Old Bag. The note was with the camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie, 1600 camera disappeared on me. Why? Why witness? What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it's only logical. You have the camera too. Ugh. Looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? Oh, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know. I still eat meals like you. I fall in love. And I borrow things from people. Wow, she is the worst security guard ever. <laughs> Just... She is straight up thieving, chat. Straight up thieving. Um, I think your definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman's business card, and when I noticed it said, Slimebag Celebrity Photographer Extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of picture she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know these things. Bang. Bailiff, check this camera's photos. Hurry. We must examine them at once. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do we have? There's only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. I can save mid-trial. I'm gonna do this, actually. I was thinking about it before. I was like, when I was testing something earlier, I'm like, uh, just in case it's one of those annoying guess correctly or fail scenarios, I just want to quickly go back to there. I have a feeling we're due for one. We had one earlier... And like that one, at least I knew the answer to, but I just want to make sure in case it's something like a point out the photo thing and it's like, aha, you were five pixels too far to the right and you fail. Like what happened when we were doing case two of this game. I kind of don't want to game over and redo all that. So let's at least bring us here. There is only one photo that seems to be relevant to the case. Please present it to the court. This is... this is the Nickel Samurai. See, I told you, that's the guy I saw. This proves the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. On this photo, added to the court record. What does this all mean? Edge guard, so picture taken in the hallway right after the murder. This photo by itself does not prove the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. On Guard clearly stated that at the time of the murder, he was still in his Nickel Samurai costume. Hmm. If that is the case, then this Nickel Samurai... 
The defendant. Bang. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We've examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright. The court will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive ev evidence against your client? This photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objective here and blow it, then I would put Maya's life in danger. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lotta took, there's... Okay, I'm gonna save. So, chat... So, I mean, like... So here's the thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what specifically it wants me to point out in the photo. So, like, clearly the costume doesn't fit the person because we assume it is Adrian Andrews in it. But there are two leggings with wrinkles. So, which legging does it want me to point at in order to say that the wrong person's in the costume? This feels kind of rude. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, do I just flip a coin? Like, what? Like, which one? They're both relevant. I'm gonna say there's something strange with it. I'm gonna guess. There's something strange with the photo. <laughs> Is it the fact the costume doesn't fit him, just like the previous Phoenix Wright game? I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth. I think we can all agree there is nothing strange with this photo. There is no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. I mean, it's... It's really obvious, I just don't know specifically which leg to look at. Do I point at, like, one of the images not folding correctly? I mean, let's take a look at this again. I don't know. I I'm gonna guess the leg. <laughs> one, one of the many wrinkle sources. Debunk with a bunker buster. Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um, anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? See, chat, this is what I'm talking about. That's exactly why I saved. <laughs> I knew the game was going to do something like this. I vaguely recall being annoyed by something. It might have been this, specifically, where I, I just quit. <laughs> just got so annoyed. So we might be here a while, chat. Um, well, I found something wrong with this photo. Can't let this chance go by. Where in the heck did she take this photo from, anyway? It's the third wrinkle for the right, not the second game over. I mean, that almost happened in the second case, which was funny because I pointed out where the murder really took place and the game is like, silly Phoenix, it can't be there. And then like, like an hour later, it's like, oh yeah, the murder did take place there. I was like, I know, that's why I selected it. Damn you, Phoenix, right? It's all out of focus. Why can't she take a good shot, especially when it counts? Now then, let's hear your objection. What about this photo is strange? I mean, there's so many pieces about, I mean, like, it could be, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. <laughs> there's like, I, I think I have a roughly one in four. I don't think it has anything to do with the rest of the costume, which is fine. I'm pretty sure it has to do with the wrinkles. Do I point at the mountain not quite fitting on him? <laughs> Take that, I guess. I would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. What are you pointing to? His ankles. If you could see this person's ankles, that could be one thing. However, you can't. And what does that mean? Oh my gosh, I got it. <laughs> Chad, I was like, I don't know how lenient that was. Maybe we'll go back. You know what? what let, let, hold on. Let's go back. Hold on. How lenient was it? I'm curious. We're, we saved. It's fine. We'll go forward. I want to know. We'll mash this a little bit. So if I had chosen the other leg, what would have happened? Let's find out together, chat. So I'm going to skip this. So if I had chosen this leg, what would have happened? Take 
Okay. Okay. It. Okay. There's at least some mercy. There's some mercy. Both both legs would have counted. I needed to know, chat, because I was like, I'm not entirely convinced I would have passed. So that made me feel a little better. So no matter what leg, I would have passed. But anyway, let's let's continue on from the ankles comment. The costume person in this photo could not have been Mr. On Guard. Really, check how lenient it is. Check the empty space between the legs. Nah, that's that's fine. If I'm touching the leg in general, that's what I wanted to check. What is the meaning of this? Objection. I wonder if you would care to elaborate. With actual facts, that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai poster. Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the Hakama. His socks. You can see his socks. Exactly. However, in this photo, the Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakama up just to walk. There's only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Bang, bang, bang. All right, I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Edgeworth is unusually calm today. That's true. He's just letting the trial run itself. As if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then... I haven't damaged his case at all? Bang. Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not Matt on guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Hmm. I figured it would come to this. What? Right. I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven that the person inside this costume is not mad on guard. In that case, who is this a photo of? Who is the person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Don't stress out over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. We should be focused on his Edward's attitude, don't you think? Yeah. Why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person in this photograph? <laughs> it's my attorney badge. <laughs> um, well, we know we have to present Adrian because that's who we're trying to pin. Even though we know she technically didn't commit the murder, she did try to set up the conspiracy. So we'll do this. Take that. Thank you for sticking around, Rob. Hopefully you have a good night. Adrian Andrews. If you want to know who that nickel samurai is, it's none other than this woman. And why would you say it must be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. She could freely move in and out of Mr. On Guard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. On Guard that night. And how does that all add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. On Guard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as a murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is you want, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense moves to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Corita. But she didn't do it. Oh. Okay, well, it's gonna well the trial's about to be extended as we have to guide Phoenix to the correct conclusion. <laughs> right, chat? We're like, ah, oh, Adrian Andrews did it. Definitely not the killer who called us earlier. Definitely not him, rolls eyes. <laughs> okay. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Well, that statement is true. Th that statement is true. The rest isn't. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. It looks like this trial has hit a most unexpected development. This is why Mia can't rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, the worst part is she's just with us the whole time. She's never going to sleep, chat. The killer definitely isn't a killer, you're right. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, your honor. 
This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to court as a witness, it means the trial will go on for another day. One more day. Ah! If I don't get a verdict today, then Maya... Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn court. I love wait and see as an option. Well, that Maya will be fine. <laughs> well, I guess I'll raise an objection. Bang. Now then, objection! Please, Your Honor, continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrew. Hold it. I abhor wasting such a valuable time. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But, but, we cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Tisk tisk. Unexpected development? I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by- oh, excuse me. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave his way to subpoenaing Miss Adrian Andrews. It's all happening according to plan. Oh no, chat, it's according to Keikaku. Even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. Chat with the objection, Maya could be with her sister if we let go. Dango saying, Your Honor, I need to give you a verdict with shoddy random testimony and evidence like we already do. I mean, he was- the, the judge was ready to close the case before we even- had a testimony with Old Bag. So yeah, the fact that he's requesting more is kind of funny. Like, very contradictory. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what? Bang, 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 chat. What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution's lobby. She is the next witness. Everything, everything was planned out in advance by that man? Somehow, I knew there was no way Mr. Edgeworth would overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Bang. Very well, we will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a 10 minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. The court will now take a 10 minute recess. Bang. To be continued, chat. Look at us go. Saving content. Sure, we'll save. Progress. March 22nd, 214 PM, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Dude, I can't believe that, Adrian. No way. Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews. She's your manager. Would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. It's after the ceremony during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have easily planted that blood-covered button in your Hakama. Hmm. Because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes. She is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Carita. No. <laughs> right, chat? No. <laughs> but why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be all right. Get you acquitted by the end of today. Give me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze. Okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix. You think her motive is related to Celeste Impact's missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impacts as her strength and reason to live. 
But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounded like she left a suicide note. The person thought to have hidden it is Juan Carda, victim of the murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Carda. All to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible. And one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about the relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' dependency issues with regards to Miss Impacts. It was... Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one in command of the ship. Don't let your guard down yet. March 22nd, 2.25pm, just a court. Courtroom number three. Bang. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Corrida's room. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt, Matt Ungard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Oh, yes, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Oh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. The judge was ever a prosecution witness. You do all the work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relationship to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corrida. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm, so it was a fry and bait matter. Or was that debate and fry? Reminds me of fishing. Someone take the judge away, Chad. But I... But I didn't kill him. No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who would beg to differ. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well, then. Witness, please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. When I found the body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. Hmm. After that, I went to Juan's room. And there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. What I saw was, naturally, the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. Mm-hmm. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Mm. So, I mean, there's a couple of problems with that. So, I mean, if we're taking her side of things, like, it's kind of one of those things where it doesn't really explain the button and the knife, but we already know what the truth is, so I guess we just gotta push on one of these things. So I think we have to basically make her talk about the glass and things on the floor, maybe the guitar case. She mentioned the juice. So I'm probably gonna push her on this a bit more. Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of a crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix, she is one cool and collected customer, 
and she has brains to match. <laughs> John like Phoenix. He came unarmed in this battle of wits chat. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking, so you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over. Understand? Okay, so I guess she's telling us to press. So let's press her... Let's see. Time, don't care about that. Went to Juan's room. Let's press on this, maybe we'll get evidence. If not, we'll get evidence maybe on the next one. Or an option to present evidence. So basically we need her to make a contradiction. So we know offhand that the guitar case got wet. So we have to get her to maybe admit when the flower vase had fallen over. So if she admits to knocking anything over, then I think that's kind of like a gotcha with her. But I think right now I don't have what I need to do it. So let's press. Hold it. You were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. Despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corrida. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. You certainly can't expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm, I see. Alright, so that didn't seem to advance anything, so let's press this statement. Oh, no, 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 that's not the one I wanted to press. Yeah, let's let's have her ask... Let's ask about the juice. Hold it. And if not, I'll go back a statement and maybe press. Juice? Yes. There was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on this wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down, without thinking. Oh, excuse me, without drinking it. Miss Andrews, I'd like you to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Carta, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank? I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? We gotta press further. Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that as you... S oh, excuse me. I'm convinced that as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm. Actually, so would I. I I'm sorry. It's just... It's kind of embarrassing. When I... When I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Oops. Got her, chat. Bang. Flower vase? Are you talking about the one in the floor in the crime photo? This mess of glass shards. So I think... It's on the case, right? Not inside? Yeah, so if we, if we take a look at this photo as presented, if she had knocked the flower vase over, it would be wet in the case. However, when we look at the evidence of the guitar case, it's only on top of the lid. So that says that it was closed before the flower vase came down. So what we're going to try to get her to do is to admit whether or not the case was open or not. And that should catch her. This mess of glass shards. It was originally on top of the dresser. But when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. Bang. 
It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. Uh-oh. That can't be true. Daughter chat. So let us go ahead and present the guitar case. Objection! Objection. You testified that you knocked the flower vase over. Is this correct? Yes. Are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? Is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. So Kirk is saying if I'm hearing is if we catch her on that, it'll be an open and shut case. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. I like that. I'm sure they thought of that pun when they were doing this too. It's true, the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. Bang. That's very true. Furthermore, there's one other strange thing about this guitar case. And w w what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with that? The guitar case was open when the vase fell. The glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Uh. Objection! Objection. What is your point, right? That the case was closed at the time of the vase was knocked over. Is that all? Objection! Objection. No. Think back to what Miss Andrew testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. Ugh. Yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. Objection! Objection. But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It is no bearing on this case at all. Edgeworth, what if it was carrying something other than a guitar? Right, chat? Who is to say it didn't have the suicide note in it, right? Trying to, trying to mislead us. Nice try, Phoenix Wright. Roll our eyes. Dot, dot, dot from Phoenix. It may very well be. H however, uh, the empty gu guitar case does seem to have no relation to the case, doesn't it? Chad, I feel like this, like, like the, the sounding of the face palms. So I'm presuming it went from his guitar case to one of the teddy bears and they smuggled it out of the teddy bear, out with the teddy bear, because no one would think twice of the teddy bear. I'm assuming that's what has occurred. But, you know, we, we have to make Phoenix realize it, which is harder than it should be. <laughs> hmm. It seems there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. <laughs> Just like that. I'm like, Mia, please, speak for Phoenix. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think you need to hear more details about the guitar case? Absolutely, make her testify. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. Huh. I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this. But it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. Bang. All right, I'll follow along for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. The guitar case. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. Suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Okay, right chat? Okay. <laughs> 10 out of 10 on the believability scale with that one chat. Okay. Hmm. It looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. Um. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Hmm. 
using any way to change the topic. A convenient escape for a weak man. Damn, we just got burned hard by Edgeworth. Okay, so let's re-examine the statements. I'm too clear because I was a bit dazed. We don't care about that. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked over the bass. Must have opened the guitar case. I knocked pause over. Oh, you know what it is? Oh, 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 oh. So, it doesn't have her fingerprints on it. Oh, this is easy. I, I was, I was like, overthinking it. I'm, like, trying to prove whether or not somebody had opened the case. So, because it doesn't bear her fingerprints, how did she open it? Unless she's admitting to wearing the costume, which is fine. So, I think we got her. Because she can't possibly have not left fingerprints on the guitar case but also left fingerprints on the wine glass, unless she changed outfits. So it could be true that she opened it, but she did it in the costume. So I think we work through the logic. This should be the thing that we need to present. Let's go ahead and present it. Objection. Objection. There's no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Nope, we're going Sherlock Holmes or something on her. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. Ah. What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony, so of course I was dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, that's what we call a trap chat. She has fallen for the trap. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. We're gonna say that's strange. You were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Literally the piece of evidence right next to the guitar case. <laughs> Take that! I have your proof right here. This wine glass. The wine glass. You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah. Uh, even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange that you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Uh did, did we made her glasses explode and then she put on another pair? What? Uh, should, should she go to the hospital? I mean, I'm pretty sure she got glass shards in the eye. Also, she might be psychic. I'm not sure. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. What do you mean? I believe that guitar case plays a very important role here. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But the guitar! The bright red guitar was at the studio! Oh, Phoenix, move on, please, I beg of you. Phoenix, drop all your presumptions. Mia, slap him real fast. What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean... It was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not right either. Oh, jeez. I'm like, Phoenix! <laughs> Bang. Hmm. I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the case... Objection! Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Yeah, sadly I think the Zigglebot died. So rip Zigglebot. And also stream elements in general. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic, and lull us on to his misguided... Objection! No, Your Honor. Please, recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. Which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photo of the crime scene. Oh no, chat. They're wide open. 
I'm sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. Objection. Objection. If you are so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten us as to why that guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Um... Can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well, let's suppose for a second. The bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing. You don't mean to suggest that a bright black objection. So, you intend to push your theory the case was not empty. Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deplete that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside the case at the time of the murder? So, as much as I want to present, potentially, the suicide report, I think it might be too early. I think we gotta work our way towards it. So, we have to- okay. So, inevitably, that's why she was there. So, I have to establish the fact that the reason she didn't put on- or the reason she didn't have fingerprints on her were because of the costume. <laughs> so I'm assuming I just present the Nickel Samurai here. Because how else would she end up in a costume while the other person was sleeping in it? So I think I have to introduce the concept of a spare costume, maybe? I think so. Because again, I don't think he realizes the whole other side of the story yet. So I, I think I would be jumping ahead if I did that. So let's present the Nickel Samurai. Take that. Take that. This is... This is a photograph. Yes, but what is important is what is in that picture, Your Honor. In this picture... It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... What are you proposing? Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai. The hero's very own costume. What? Bang. Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right. Are you saying the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane would point would there be to doing something like that? An insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? I, I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You... you mean this photo? Bang, bang, bang. Order, order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Wow. I don't think he should proudly say that statement. <laughs> hmm. So the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Objection. Wait one second, your honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendant's be in the victim's room? Inside the guitar case of all places. Hmm. True. That is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. So, okay, so let's so let's take it. Okay, so I didn't. I don't think I elaborated this in the theory. So, what would establish this is the reason it's a costume in there, amongst other things that he brought with him at the time, is we know that there was a press conference going on there and that Matt, Matt on guard did not know. So I'm guessing he intended to do the conference as Matt on guard to defame him. Alvishan says, I also don't agree with that costume fitting a, a guitar case, something like that. What was this nickel samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? I'm gonna say it was a spare costume. Mr. on guard did not take his costume off during the break period. 
In that case, the costume we're talking about was the spare one. Hope you're doing well, Calvisham. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the, the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean the victim himself had brought this spare to the ceremony on purpose. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Corrida, was the Jammin' Ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? And therein lies the sticking point. Objection! Objection. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? N no I, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you could explain this one? Think carefully before you answer. Then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Oh, Mia, your faith is so misplaced. All right, this is what I think. The re I love how it only costs us one point. <laughs> They're like, listen, he doesn't know, Jack. Just use all the evidence. You'll figure it out with your remaining points. <laughs> I love the confidence of the game. So let's bring in the post-ceremony stage show. Take that. Take that. What is this? Hmm. On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. From once you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Engard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can only mean one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida himself. The victim? Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corrida was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. Bang. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference. But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't know yet. However, what I'm concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. There we go. Now we can get closer to presenting the report that I was intending to go to. I had a feeling if I went there first, the game would be like, nah. -uh. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue onwards. Edgeworth says, the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by convent, and by confess, I wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Carta, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that is what I what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. Hmm. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say. The press conference was set up by Juan. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared that second costume for him, that was also me. Dun, dun, dun. You? Juan had bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? 
It looked like somehow, Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. As Phoenix goes, what? Bang, bang, bang. And do you know what the secret of Mr. On Guards is, Miss Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Ah, uh, I see. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone, but that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Madden after all. Protect Mr. On Guard? Bang. And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. Protecting Matt. Ooh. What a, what a brutal investigation so far, trial so far. We're going deep in the testimony chat. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. Well, chat, I guess if Juan was the only one to know the secret, I guess you could say it could be something like, it takes Juan to know Juan. There we go, Chan. I'm returning the favor for Kirk. Pun served. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. Hmm. This does not account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We finally are seeing her true self. She's more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I am ready to make a ruling. He says that literally every testimony they ever make, I swear. Every time, chat. Every time in this case. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine Mr. Wright. Looks like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn our logic upside down. Okay, let me reread. I'm feeling evidence fatigue. Let me think about this. A feeling Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. Didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I'd protect him. Uh, so the only part that really seems like I could even really potentially press would be Matt killing could be one. Alibi, I don't have anything to go off of, or else that would have been a good one. I guess it's possible she could slip up about the button. Because I, I think from that standpoint... We can agree that the button ended up on him, but if she came later, if we're putting ourselves in her shoes, she would have seen the button potentially already removed. So unless she went back to Matt, I don't know how she would know about the button. So I'm gonna go along this line of logic and see if she messes up about where the button is at this time. So let's press this and hope this leads somewhere. Hold it. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene the victim and his murderer fought. During the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matsukama, isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Ugh. Looks like you were out Fox yet again, Mr. Wright. Anyway, the neck doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. The icy stare, yes. Oof. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. 
button was thrown off one during his fight with Matt. Okay. So let's take a look at pieces of evidence related to it. So... The button itself doesn't say this. So I guess what we have to do is... I don't know. What? This feels kind of like a weird statement. Like, if we're being very technical, the button itself should be enough to present here. But from the standpoint of what the game is expecting... Is it more that she said it was during the fight? Like, are we going to try to catch her on the timing of it? Because we know that he was killed with the scarf first, and then he was stabbed after he was dead. So... But she doesn't... I don't feel like she's making like a super strong claim here, but I could try to present it here because the ninja button doesn't help with this because on the evidence piece itself, it doesn't have it. So I think I actually have to present the autopsy report to bring into effect that it doesn't really line up with events. Since she couldn't have both seen the button and also... Yeah, th there's too much wrong with this. We're going to present this. Let's not overthink it. Objection! This is the victim's autopsy report. Clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. St strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume. When? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly. Which means... It's impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Uh... That's right, Miss Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off the victim's already dead body. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. What is the meaning of objection? What is the meaning of this right? <laughs> I love Edgeworth overriding the judge. At least everybody knows the judge is not worth listening to in this game. So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight. So the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? To destroy evidence, have a memento of the crime. That's a good one. Well, we keep saying this like every other time, so I'm going to say to pin the crime on unguard again. I feel like that's the second time or third time I've presented that exact situation. Oh, the endurance of this. Something else. Take another drink because we got to talk more. Give me a moment. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Engard. There's no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. Ungard was set up. By the real killer, of course. Bang. And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer, then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix. You can't let your guard down, yet. Not until the very end. The real killer. The person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard is... Oh, I can't present the killer. <laughs> I, I was actually going to save and see what happened, just to see what would occur there. Well, anyway, I've been saying this since the beginning, so I'm going to present her yet again for, like, the fourth time. Take that, chat. It's Magatama, you're right. Miss Adrian Andrews, I choose you. 
You are Mr. Kurede's killer. What is she, Pikachu? Why are we choosing her? What? Oh, there go her glasses again. Bang, bang, bang. Order, 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 Mr. Wright. This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? I mean... Am I taking crazy pills? Like, isn't the reason she's on the trial is that she... We literally brought her in to accuse her of murder, and they're, like, really surprised we're accusing her of doing the crime again. Like, that's how it started, like, two cross-examinations ago. Why, why are we in this, like, eternal loop chat, I swear? Ugh. The worst part, chat? I don't even think this trial ends here. We, we, we have so much more to go. Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. Just think about it, chat. We haven't even gotten Matt on guard on the stand still. So we know there's at least one more witness. And possibly Lotta Heart. I'm hoping Lotta Heart is not there. My fingers are crossed Lotta Heart is not again in this, but we'll see. What? How preposterous. You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Matt on guard, naturally. The knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. Ah! But then... What? What about the button that was found in Matt's Sakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the people who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Ungard really was the killer, there's no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Wouldn't that be amazing if he actually did do it and he purposely set himself up to look like he was being set up? See, that would have been the next level play, right, chat? <laughs> he just did it a completely different way and was throwing shade on everything. Ah! Uh. Oh, there go her glasses again. The only person who could have put this button in Mr. Angard's Akama is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is yet, oh, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. She has the power of infinite glasses, exactly. I, I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just a costume inside the guitar case? It had only been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, no, I... Objection! But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Th th that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something to open it. But, a glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrew purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah! And to top it all off, there's this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth could believe this nickel samurai is Mr. On Guard. I guess that just discredited an old bag there. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also short in statue, are you not? Please stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I... I... I refuse to testify. What was that? There's a law. 
says it can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. Oh no, she's pleading the fifth chat. Well, yes, you are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination by allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. There we go. Actually, thinking back to the yesterday in Mr. Ungard's room. Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? All right. That's it. That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things look bad. Show courtroom shenanigans, I know. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. There's still one thing you haven't done. We're literally hard carrying this case, Mia. You've no idea. Something I haven't done. Ha, ha, ha. What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence. What is so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you've proven is circumstantial. You mean like everything else presented in the case so far? What? Circumstantial. Yeah, it's kind of like, Confucian, I guess the best way to put it is you get to basically deny the extent to which it is. And you don't have to confirm anything. So if the evidence isn't solid enough, technically that doesn't incriminate you. And you choosing not to testify can't be held against you in certain proceedings. So as much, so they tell you as part of courtroom directions, you can't hold that against the defendant. They can do it, however, if it's considered with malice in certain cases. So for example, if they uh, refuse to turn over evidence and things like discovery, then they can be prosecuted to the, the worst extent that you can imagine. And that has come up before in civil trials. There you go. There, There's your courtroom talk real quick. <laughs> Circumstantial. Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corita. Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corita? I believe this may lead to incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But, Miss Andrews... If you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. That's actually another perfect reasoning in game of why you would do it. So the other thing too is to also avoid uh, opening up testimony. So if you don't have to lie about it because you don't have to speak the truth to the matter either, you can't be caught up in contradictions and you can't be accused of perjury. But yeah, her her saying that does not help her case. <laughs> that's something you see. That's something you would think. That's not something you should say. That's more for the player's benefit, I guess. Yeah, but typically you're not usually... Well, most people choose to plead the fifth when it comes to criminal circumstances then let the evidence speak for itself, for or against. But whatever. No, she's taking that defiant attitude again. Yeah, how dare she have rights, Phoenix? Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed ourselves in the worst possible situation. Bang. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Yeah, you'll see that too when, like, especially 
especially when it comes to things like uh police interrogations or interviews so if you don't want to answer because they don't necessarily have anything on you it could go that way or they could be fishing for information you could flip it on its head that you didn't do anything and they're just looking for any potential slip up to potentially accuse you of something so that's also why you would plead the fifth as an additional statement <laughs> no a minor inconvenience quick phoenix run to me for help something like that miss adrian andrews has refused to testify and the defense's theory that she's the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there's only one thing the court can do, and that is to declare a recess. A recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter, and at tomorrow's trial, Tomorrow? We don't have a tomorrow. We don't get a not guilty verdict today, then. Hold it! Please wait, Your Honor. That's not necessary. The trial. Please continue the trial. We're looking to get you on flimsy stuff. That would be the most positive way of using it. Yeah, it's just kind of like your defense. I think that probably comes up the most often when it comes to being pulled over for potentially speeding or drunk di or drunk driving. So if they, for example, if you got pulled over for a warning that your taillight was out, that wouldn't necessarily result in a ticket. But if you also admitted at the same time to the cop that you were going like 40 or 50 over the speed limit, like then they then they can charge you with the ticket. So it's kind of a it's kind of a in your favor and also kind of not in some ways. It really just depends on the scenario it's being used in. But more often than not, it's most to uh, benefit the defendant. Unless there's malice attributed due to other scenarios that would invalidate it, etc. But anyway. That's more the exception to the rule. But anyway. Let's continue forth. The trial. Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? Th that's not it. This isn't about it. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... Yeah, I would say most often where it backfires, the, the, the scenario I'm thinking of are civil, case, civil cases versus criminal. There is a distinction in how it's being used. But that, that, that's, that's complicated legal stuff. We'll, we'll save that for some other time, maybe. This isn't Law 101. Don't take legal advice from the stream. But just know you have rights. Just, just know that. that. That's fair to state. But anyway, let's proceed before I get hung up on that. But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is... Objection! It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth, what, what are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whether she might be guilty of... something, then she has no right to withhold the testimony. Yes, that's very true, but actually, there's one little thing I'm curious about. Unless there's a surprise lawyer and channel lawyers here, all things stated with a grain of salt, exactly. We gotta cover... See, that I know from watching other stuff. You gotta cover legal bases. Bases there. Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're no, no duh, right, chat? Usually when one finds a body, they're shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, 
I want to state that you, if you have a reason behind your actions. I'd like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request the witness testify again. So what happened when she first discovered the victim's body? Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. Is it possible he's doing his job? Question mark. I know it's strange in the Phoenix Wright universe that somebody does something out, you know, because they want to versus just like pure spite of another individual. But, you know, maybe somebody wants some justice to happen in this system. It's not the judge for sure. You can rule him out. Bang, chat. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. When I found the body. That glass of juice. I did really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and I saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he's sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. <laughs> yeah, dead tired. And I saw him sitting like that. I thought he was dead didn't cross my mind. Seriously? Seriously? That's where we're going with? You didn't think he was dead? To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I had to pour him some juice. <laughs> My Juan, I know how you love to go to sleep with a giant knife in your chest. You're just sleeping. It's just, the knives are a sleep aid. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Wow, that was the worst testimony so far. Mm. So you poured that glass of juice for the victim. A <laughs> knife is an aid to the final sleep, that's true. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. What do you mean there's nothing wrong with the testimony? Do I have to like wave the- not this one. Do I have to like wave the photo? Like, gee guys, maybe this is really suspicious. <laughs> like... Like, oh, he, he's just, he's just, he's taking a nap, chat. I mean, clearly when I see this, I think he's just really sleepy. Jesus. Oh my gosh, I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. White, you may begin your cross-examination. Well, I'm just gonna immediately present the photo and how dumb that piece of evidence is. Right, chat? I feel like she's not even trying anymore. <laughs> just, like, hello? Objection? <laughs> He's just EP. That's Dango. Something like that. Nothing better for sleep than a little bloodletting. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> then, then we find out he has leeches, too. He's just, he's trying all the methods. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body. Ah! Uh. Yeah, that was a really stupid mistake, Andrews. What is the meaning of this? Well, she's lying, Your Honor. Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There's a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Karita's chest. Someone who saw the scene would have immediately thought that thought here was a dead man. Uh, um, that's... Well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would make... would mistake this for someone who fainted. And then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Y your point is... Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Ah! There go her glasses again, chat. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you're the real killer. No! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt on guard, is not guilty after all. But, but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. How many classes did she break through with that? No, probably at least five. Come on, it was a... 
have a knife sticking out of you Tuesday. Oh, that's true, Dago. If they'd only checked the calendar, they would have seen it. Law and order music, says Calvisham. The bum bum or whatever. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. He was mad, I swear it. He's the one who killed Juan. But you're the one who refused to testify. Oh, is that how we're gonna get around not implicating the assassin? I guess I didn't think about that part. I guess if she goes down for the rap of someone else committing the crime, that's pretty bad. So, I'm kind of curious where this goes now. Are we seriously gonna let the killer go? Or are we actually gonna interview him? Oh well. And your reason for not doing so was that you oh excuse me. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. <laughs> That's because Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? Would this really be justice for all? I see what Dango did there. I I I refuse to testify. Bang. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt on guard's innocence has clearly been demonstrated. Is... is it over? Have we... have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. Well, that's because you're in the Phoenix Wright universe and they confess for some stupid reason. Now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. <laughs> I feel like this is such meta commentary right now. Phoenix, you were in like seven cases tops, I'm telling you. I'm just shaking my head, chat. I'm just like, how, how many more do you need, Phoenix? <sighs> I guess if we count the other one that was retroactively added, maybe eight. Bang, chat. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt on guard. Objection. Objection! Your Honor, the prosecution feels it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. Well, what? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. Uh, Edgeworth, that isn't a requirement in the judicial system. Bang, bang, bang. The absolute real truth. What are you? I want to practice law in this world if every person confesses guilty. I mean, life would be very easy. Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head. But as long as you protect yourself through silence, Madame Guard will go free. And in his place, you will become the guilty party. That's... that's a lie. I... I don't believe you. What? I... I was told if I spoke... If I spoke, then it would be all over. And Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I... I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then... Then right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Madame Guard will be acquitted. It's almost like there are multiple parties trying to influence the court. I mean, they should just declare a mistrial. It would be real chat. A every single one of this judge's case should just be, like, basically thrown out. <laughs> All the decisions. Vacated slash deleted. Go not valid. Redo. New trial. <laughs> Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now and is clinging on to them. Then what should we do? This... This is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. Well, Phoenix, it's because you're really inexperienced. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? I would throw the judge out, says Calvisham. I'm sure everybody would here. What we have to do now is... is get our not guilty. That is my only priority. 
Uh oh. Sounds like we're not doing our justice for all, chat. It wasn't me. I'm begging you, please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help, please, someone help me. Bang. Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor? The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What do I intend to do? Well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Justice for all, some exceptions applies to chat, something like that. Right. I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. Think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the crying woman over there, right? Is he being serious? I'm like, do, do I have to present radio transceiver to Phoenix's face? <laughs> like, did he forget? Like, what? Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I love I can request the not guilty verdict. I am so tempted to see that. <sighs> no, chat, let's save. We got really far in this case. Let's save over this part. I want to see a bad ending. I am pretty sure this is a bad ending, but I'm curious what happens. Let's witness a game over together. So remember, chat, this is an on-purpose game over. I'm not making a guess here. I would guess force Andrews to testify as my actual guess, since Edgeworth will be disappointed in us. And disappointing Edgeworth is basically like destroying our own career. So let's see what happens if we do this. No matter what she says, Miss Andrews is the only person it could be. Not to mention, I don't have a choice. I have to win a complete acquittal today. Your Honor, the defense believes there's enough evidence to substantiate our claim. Therefore, we motion that this court passes a verdict of not guilty as soon as possible. Hmm. I'm disappointed in you, Mr. Wright. What have you learned in this past year? That's enough. Bang. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear the defense's theory is the truth. Y you're wrong. What a shame. I'd hope things wouldn't come to this, however. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. Stop. M Mr. Edgeworth? This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop, please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Uh, that's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. Wow, that's kind of messed up. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop, I beg you. People find out. People find out all. All. We're going to say you would choose death. That is no concern to me. Well, <laughs> wow, that got real dark real quick. Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself or shall I? Either is fine with me. I, I'll talk, but please help me. Nothing matters anymore. Oh. Wait, it... Wait, it actually continues if you do this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So what happens if I go the other way? Wait a minute, now I'm... Now I'm interested. I would have thought that would have been a game over. So what if I force her to testify? Well, I mean, we should probably make Edgeworth happy with us. That's the only true ending. So apparently you can't lose this. Good to know, I guess didn't know that. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But... 
I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. <laughs> really? That's our reasoning, Phoenix? Miss Andrews, I'd like to know what you're really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Judge, you've seen us in action. We have no idea what we're doing. Sure, Mr. Ungard would get acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want this trial to end? Be quiet. How dare you? You... You're trying to trick me. Bang. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear the defense's theory is the truth. Wait. What? Wait, wait, why did the judge interrupt that? Okay, so this just goes back into the same loop as before. Okay, I'm not going to reread the dialogue. So now Edgeworth is saying what a shame more in, I guess, pointing at the judge rather than us. Interesting, I guess. So anyway, let's proceed up to the point where she went to the testimony. That's the alternate path, I suppose. Intense hand, hand pointing and hand gestures, chat. Okay, now we're back to where we were before, but this time Edgeworth isn't disappointed in us. Witness testimony, my crime. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted, honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I sat Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why. That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Stab the body? With the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain person. A certain cowardly man. What? What do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, mostly because they're very slow individuals, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt, the scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corrida, in the chest with the knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. Why did he put crime in quotes? I mean, that's, that is a crime. Phoenix, wait, 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 what? Is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Phoenix, please, you're, you're killing me. Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Jeez, there's so many cross-examinations. <laughs> you know the worst part is there's so many more to go. Holy. Although I don't know if they'll save it for another time or not. I guess we'll find out. My, in, in quotations, crime. I mean, disturbing the scene of the crime, falsifying evidence, false testimony. Th those are real crimes. She did just commit them and is now admitting to them. Right, chat? That's conspiracy right there at minimum. Proved. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. I don't think there's any contradiction here. So maybe it's just one of those ones I have to press every statement. I'm just going to press every statement. There are a couple times in some of the other cases where there's nothing to do. Like, Gumshoe just presents basic evidence and we just need to get more evidence from her. Or him, depending on who's giving the testimony, but... Let's press, I guess. Hold it! The way to hell is paid with good intentions, says Calvisha. Maybe. But you could tell from the state the room was in. There must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say you did not know he was dead? He... He had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is also part of the Jammin' Ninja's costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. Said was also... Tilted a bit down, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up, and went to pour the juice. Let's press. Hold it. 
What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan... He was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought... I should force some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. Alright, let's press again. Hold it! That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I'd use that, then... The police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. Let's say hold it when she talked about the button. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But... At the time... I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I sat Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. I used the button somehow. I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. On Guard's Hakama. Yes, that's what I planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? We're gonna say hold it here. An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lada. There's also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. That's Miss Oldbag for you. I'd already been caught and made into a big scoop for the certain tab weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. And now she admits to the costume, so we'll press one final time. Hold it. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes. I took it from Global Studios. Also put it in Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes. Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference with it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is this secret? That, I don't know. Anyway, I thought if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. Bang. I think we've heard enough. So, after that... You went back to Mr. On Guard's room and planted the button. In a Matsukama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into the bag. Then I stuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word, what does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is mad on guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. Dot 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 from literally everybody. Bang. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands... We can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. Defense still. Objection. Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points her to points to her as a murderer. Bang. The cross-examination of this witness is over. And so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. 
Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Bang. Uh-oh, chat. We didn't come up with a verdict. Well, we failed. The zoom in on the empty chair. Today's... Today's trial. It's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, if I may look at one thing, that card in your hand, it's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. Remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. Oh, I see the card next to the drink now. I see it now. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. He was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? Did say she found a calling card of the murderer? I was going to say, no, that, no, that is 100% what it is, Kirk. <laughs> it is 100% that. That's not, not a joke or anything. <laughs> I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card if you ask me. I, I know, has anybody not contaminated this crime scene? Like, would, would they just like to come in and just take like a glass, some souvenirs? Maybe they want a teddy bear. <laughs> I mean, this, this crime scene is just like so full of... So full of holes and or... Falsified evidence? Holy. But as far as to a clue to this case, I don't see why. Hold it, chat. Witness, that card. Give it to me, hurry. Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. I. I didn't mean to. Crime scenes are basically like a garage sale. That's true. What is this all about? I've never seen Edgeworth so emotional before. That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? Oh. Right, chat? Oh my gosh. I'm not sure how long this case is. So what we'll do, let's get at least up to the next trial. And then next week, I think we'll beat the trial. Because I have a feeling we still have to do like at least an hour to an hour and a half's worth of investigation. And then trial will be the whole next session, I have a feeling. March 22nd. Right in company law offices. Well, I mean, it's getting closer to today's date, right, chat? <laughs> Technically. Mystic Maya! M Mystic Maya! <laughs> Ugh. Crime scene has more holes than the victim, exactly. There, there, pearls. I, I can't take it anymore. Well... Look, it it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. Hmm? The condition was we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. Ungard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. Blah. She sniffles. Cheer up. We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. Dot dot dot. You're right. Miss Sigmaya is in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So... Hey, you guys! Glad I caught you, pal! Mr. Scruffy Detective! Oh, boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe. 
has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. He's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now. I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. Guess I'll talk to him. The future. So, what are you gonna do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that! Uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I... I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal. Oh, no. Oh, no, chat. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Say what? You'll be searching for things that'll prove Mr. Ungard's innocence all day, right? <laughs> Detective Dogie, yeah, that works. Well, yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. I've got lots of experience investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? talk about Edgeworth. That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. He said that? That's horrible. But because of him doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. Miss Andrews' last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony herself. Or itself, excuse me. But... I still think there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... No, I mean... Almost need to frame Mr. Ongard. I couldn't figure out... Figure that out from anything she said all day. Then... Then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. I just feel like there's more here than meets the eye. Guess she's a Transformer, Chad. Or that... Or that's what Edgeworth would like us to believe. That's such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Francisca Von Karma. Speaking of Miss Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Oh no, not Ch Chad is shattering many, many, many pairs of glasses, apparently. Due to the big oh no in chat earlier. Wasn't she shot this morning? I guess we'll ask about her. Not that I super care. Miss Von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. But she's gonna be fine, right? I mean, Edgeworth said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder. So she's okay and still hanging in there. They should be done taking the bullet out. She's probably resting at the hospital. Which one? What? Are you gonna visit her, pal? No. Well, I was kind of thinking about it. You were thinking about it? What's wrong with you, Phoenix? I would ask if he's been whipped into uh, being this passive, but then again, it is Von Karma, so I guess that makes sense. Hey, you've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she's being tortured to death, not being able to go to trial today. So maybe it'd be good for her to, if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Uh, um. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick. Uh, I'm gonna go with no. Now I'm definitely not going. Thank you, Phoenix. Um, let's see. Name of the hospital. Oh, yeah, the Hottie Clinic. Oh, not the... Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. Don't have the fake doctor again, please. Oh, he's such an awful character. I beg for mercy. Please don't be there. Please let me talk to somebody normal. I know it's a big ask in Phoenix Wright universe, but please do not put him back in the game. He is not that endearing. He did, he did not earn a second cameo in this game. The name sounds a chill down my spine. Darn right it does. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. No. No, choose not to. <laughs> Be your own person, Phoenix. This is the uh, Nickel Samurai, right? 
Yeah, that's right. Mr. Nick, please take care of Mystic Maya and be her nickel samurai, all right? I think that was the same as last time. Yeah, okay, every dialogue option looks the same. I'm gonna look at the plant and then we'll move on. Hey, it's wilting a little. I'll, I'll give it some delicious water, pal. Oh, it's okay. I already did that. The watering can. Where are you, Mr. Watering Can? Did he just call the watering can Mr.? Okay, we got a new dialogue there, I guess. I regret everything coming back here. March 22nd, Hottie Clinic reception. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Neither did I, Phoenix. Neither did I. I'm so disappointed. Let me rehydrate. <laughs> this character's just awful, chat. I'm just... <laughs> he's gotta be... He's gotta be so far of the characters we've seen in bottom five. I don't know if he's bottom one, but... Just his appearance and the constant scratching and his comedic stuff... Just nothing, it does not work for me on any sense of the scale. I really dislike this character. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient, hmm? Uh, hi. Wait a second, you're... Hmm, yes. I'm Director Hody. <laughs> oh. Why are you still here? Hmm, yes. What is it, hmm? Can I help you? You could tell me, hmm, yes. You know what, in Suikoden 5, they also made the other guy mm, yes a lot. Is that really a thing for older people? Director Hardy. Edgeworth? Hmm, yes. I'm Director Hody. Or Hody. I guess Hody. I'm Director Hody. Ho ho. Oh, you're the man from this morning. Hmm, yes. What is it? Uh huh. Director Francisca. How was Francisca von Karma? Hmm, you don't need to worry. Hmm, yes, she's in good hands. Because, you see, I'm personally taking care of her. Hmm, yes, hee hee hee. Hmm, yes, and that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. Looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looks so pitiful. Absolutely terrified. Hmm, yes. But I understand. Hmm, yes. <sighs> her opponent was a gun after all, uh huh? And I stuck up on her real secret like. She would scream really loud. Hmm, yes. Ugh. I see. Aw, oh, but she's really cute too. Hmm. What I do, she'd whip me with. Oh, when I do that, she'd whip me with her whip, uh huh? Boy, did I cry like a baby. Hmm, yes. But I think I could get used to it. Hmm. Ah! Go back to your room. Chat feeling bad for Von Karma. That's when you know the game has hit a new low. <laughs> right, right, chat? When that character is sympathetic and you're thanking Von Karma, things have gone real bad. <laughs> we're, we're like crash landing on as low as it could go. You're so mean, uh-huh. So mean, my frisky friska. Ew. But that's good. Ooh, uh. mm, okay, okay. Mm, yes. Time for my IV drops. Mm, yes. On karma dot dot dots. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ugh. I knew I shouldn't have come here. Yeah, Phoenix, why did you come here? I guess I'll talk to her. The shooting. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. Hmm. But it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. But, but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding. One is to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. I like she's putting with her left hand because her right arm is injured. 
was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. The deal. Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ungard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof I made such a plan? You're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, the trial would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem. Whether she had tampered with the evidence or not. What do you mean it's not your problem? Chat asking about all the time. I guess given her father was shot, I guess that the all the time was from maybe thinking of her father. I'm not sure. I do like the face the chat has used there. Always nice to see Aizen. I've only one objective. To find on God guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. But did she get stuck in a, a loop there? What happened there? Miss Von Karma. Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, If you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then Ungard would be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. Is that corruption I hear of Von Karma? Pretty much. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was... Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So, if you'll excuse me... Well, what's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage of that argument. Edgeworth. <laughs> She's staring at us. Well, we'll go to today's trial. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted. But to go that far... Ah. Uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, Wright. The courtroom is a garden of judgment. <laughs> oh no. Thank you for the good luck and parameter. Depending on how long this goes, we might take a break. If there is a part two to this investigation, we will save that for next time so that we have a little bit of investigation into the main trial itself. But oh boy, Chad, we are quite far into this and not seemingly very close to the next trial. I'm putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. Adrian's card. By the way, Edgeworth, you're really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Is it? Flashback to the give me the card scene. Mm-hmm. That card. What in the world is it? You mean this. Listen right. This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this car. A man called Shelly to kill- Oh my god, his, really, his name really is Shelly. <sighs> a man called Shelly to kill her. And just as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. The best at that. An assassin? Picture card was placed next to the victim at the time of the murder. Miss Andrews was carrying it. I'm just shaking my head, chat. Let's talk about the assassin. So who is the Shelly the Killer? The Killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about 100 years ago, I hear. Shelly is the professional name of the third heir to the De Killer name. So because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards with a shell on them? 
He's a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is part of his duty to his clients. His duty? He leaves a card, and his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. Also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. Uh, I see. The killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. Guess that even honorable assassins can exist. The name like that, they didn't really have a choice other than to become assassins, that's true. So, you think this assassin? Think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly the killer, huh? Maya situation. Hmm. I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess. I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Edgeworth is going to... Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. Mr. Nick? There's no way you could find her. We don't have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I... I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right. Listen. You need to know something. Juan Carta was killed by Shelley to kill her. And the client who ordered the job is mad on guard. Your own client. Why is Edgeworth telling us this? Shouldn't we have figured this out? Please stop. I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. Uh-oh, chat. We're in hard denial that our client did something wrong. I mean, as I said before, I think it's interesting that potentially he's dealing with somebody that is guilty that he has to defend. Like, most lawyers have to do at some point. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only. As we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley to kill her. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Letter of introduction received from Edgeworth allows Barry to freely investigate the crime scene. It's now been added to the court record. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. On Guard hired an assassin? Yes. <laughs> right, chat? Yes. <laughs> no way! Wow, we are in hard denial, chat. <laughs> We're gonna go through the stages of grief soon, I have a feeling. I mean, he doesn't have a psych lock. No. You asked him if he killed the other guy. He didn't technically kill the other guy. Therefore, a psych lock hasn't doesn't have to be there. That's not a contradiction, Phoenix. You should have asked if he had anything to do with the murder. Then you would have gotten a psych lock. But nope. Roll our eyes, chat. Phoenix dummy at it again. Yeah, I guess not. Maya. Please. All I ask is you... you why did I fade to black so quickly? All I ask is you, that you be safe and sound, I think is what it said there. I don't know if I double input by accident, but that was quite quick. Anyway, unknown date, time, location. I mean, we're probably in the hotel still. Given where we're looking here. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers could be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me, even though he said he was an assassin. But he's just making that up, just like how Nick does with everything in court. Damn, we got burned hard by Maya, chat. Might need to go to the hospital for that burn, chat. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Click. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. Okay. Date unknown, time unknown, location unknown. Oh. Oh, she is at DeKiller's house then. 
I like that when I look at the satellite dish, it's called Saddle Dish Digital Broadcasting. What is this place? I got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Yeah, you're telling me. Are those videos over there? Well, worry about that later. For now, should be looking for clues. That way, we can show them the system maybe get out of here. Okay. Well, we're gonna look at the bear. That's the first thing that draws my attention. That's weird. What's a figurine doing, figurine doing on a place... or doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Oh, how cute. Okay, so my theory of the bear being used to transport the will is looking pretty strong right now, chat. Looking pretty strong. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it, like they were opening it up to hide it. Or if it's some kind of puzzle or something. It's so dark in here, I can barely see, but... How is it so... There's a... There's a light on! Maya, are you blind? <laughs> Look. Do you need to admit something to us? Like, the light is, like, almost dead center in the screen. What do you mean? It's kind of feel like videotapes. All of them. So what kind of room is this? Ugh. Locked, of course. It looked like I could use the card to open this door. A little hole at the bottom of the door. If only it was a little skinnier, then I'd be able to crawl through here. Oh. Hey, it's a computer. Never really used one before. Um... I have no idea where the power switch is on this thing. Rat. There goes my plan to use this sum to somehow get out of here. Oof. Satellite dish. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR. Oh, wow, a VCR. There we go. There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. What is an antenna doing here? Wow. Never seen a TV this big before. Now, where's the power button? Hmm. Click. Fooey. It's busted. What? I would so die a happy samurai fan. If I ever get to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ah! Can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. Hmm. Indeed, the bear pun for barely see. What did I not look at? Oh, the photo. That's fair. It's a framed picture of sitting on the coffee table. A picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, looks like there's something written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. But this could be a clue. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. Yeah! It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? Or now? I would suggest you remain cooperative. You cannot. There are ways in which I can help you. Ways you mean? Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? d dead I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way. You're lying, I mean. An assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. I mean, you kind of always look like an assassin, to be fair. I mean, who is stitches like that top to bottom? Let's be real. Nick! March 22nd, 7.04 p.m. Hottie Clinic reception. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh yeah, pearls? I caught up in my thoughts about Maya's situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I... Guess for now. No choice but to believe in Mr. On Guard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's get going too. Okay. Let's go back to Ignore Gumshoe. Go to the detention center. March 22nd, detention center, visitor's room. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aw. Oops. Don't mean to click out of the game. Ugh. Too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say. Oh yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt on guard. Ah, here you are. What did he write? Is this something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. 
The Mr. Lawyer dude. I've got really something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have like a favor to ask of you. I have this cat named Shu. I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so it's probably pretty hungry. I think you could drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? The house is just a little ways down from the hotel, right? Hmm. Dot, dot, dot. This is terrible. Let's hurry. We have to feed his cat. Sure, poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Please feed my cat, Shu. My house is always just a little ways down from the hotel. Oh. Is the assassin still in Mad Ungard's house? Seems like a not great idea, to be honest. Client's request is a request. Guess we should go check up on his cat. Well, let's go to law offices. Can I go there? Why can't I go there? I like how they said, let's go do this. Literally not an option. I guess I go to the hotel lobby. I'm not sure how that comment flowed into this, but sure. We're now back at the Gatewater Hotel. Cat be damned, apparently. The cat ends up a better gumshoe than everyone else, maybe. It might have more money than Gumshoe, if nothing else. All right now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to, for Mystic Maya's sake. You shall not pass. Ugh, Miss Old Bag. Don't devalue my name and turn into a gas, you spiky-headed pettifogger. Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But I really wanted was something more valuable. I wanted his heart. I wanted it for me. It's all your fault. Waken the wild beast inside of this old bag. Ah! Did she have a heart attack? Ah, oh, Miss Old Bag. Keep your hands off me. Helmet is airtight. No air gets in and no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Hmm. Don't think you can get me to move with silly questions. You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Well, I guess I'll just present the le well, we'll present our badge first. Um, could you take a look at this? Alright, so she... So she refused to look at it because of the helmet she is on. So let's... Give her Edgeworth's letter. Hmm. Maybe I'll show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Uh, Miss Olbeck, if you would look at... What? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Edgy poo. Ugh. Is that her perfume? Vermont de Amour, I smell? Ugh. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? Hmm. The man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so. You understand? Letter of introduction given to Miss Old Bag. Just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. If you do anything bad, and I won't let you off the hook. Looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be. But you know nothing's gonna come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow. Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Um, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. Oh no, chat, they're bonding through slapping. <laughs> the cross-game bonds continue. Okay. Ugh. Got a tat-tat, chat. Ugh, what? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into Unguard's room today. Why? The police main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? Wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Old Bag. Uh, living room is unknown. 
I'm gonna go to the hall first before we go there. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Well, because the police team is scouring for clues about to kill her. So they said we couldn't go into one room. Can we go into the other room, though? Excuse me. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, hallway. Hey, city boy. L Lada, you're still here. Why is she here? Wrecking course. Investigative photographers eats or starves on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah. And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something's always about to happen. But do you have a camera? Wreck given. Photographers gotta have cameras out the ear. Like corn to be a real pro, you know. So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth. Do you have mine, you bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? I kind of don't want to talk to her. Can I just ignore her and go to Karina's room? <laughs> Chad, I think I'm just going to ignore her and continue onwards. Holy. Get what a hotel. Uh, uh, who is unging? Mr. Nick. What is that otherworldly ghastly moaning? Oh. Uh, uh. I hate evil ghosts. Wah. I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon? Uh, I'm feeling defeated, chat. There's so many joke characters. No. Why are there three joke characters and then this investigation so far? This is painful. Okay, we'll go back to old bag, I guess. Excuse me. What are you calling a demon, brat? Sigh indeed from Kirk. Ah! Zoinks! What are what are we, Shaggy? It's the alien. Who are you calling an alien? Rat a tat tat tat. Oh, it's just you, Miss Old Bag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan. You're disturbing me. <sighs> Fine, I'll talk to you. Night of the murder. Please talk to me about the night of the murder. Just one more time. Talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of a photographer in her note. She was loitering around here with that imbecilic look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face? Okay, got it. Now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. You're gonna take notes, at least make me sound better than that. Oh, all right. Now I've, now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working that night, too, doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had time to waste around here the whole night. Memories of Karita. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about Mr. Karita. He was the most popular star. You know, especially where it counts, in my book. Hmm. But I heard that he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. On Guard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know. But, he's going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. Hmm. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big, and certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Why is that one very realistic? I'm sure it's just a visual gag. We don't have to think about it too hard. Hmm? What is it, Pearls? Presents. They're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Let's ask about the presents. Well, Mr. Krita's presidents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of Juan without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? My dear Juan was training. He fought barehanded with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win. After the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. 
Look, it's just like in those young people's dramas. See those two tuckered out. Down by a river going, heh. <laughs> you, you sure can fight. You too, bub. You too. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. Ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. Hmm. There are a lot of bears. What? I just noticed there's a bear with a blindfold on the bed. That's a little... That's a little something. I don't know if this bear is supposed to be referencing anything in particular. Or this bear with the little bandana. So we'll go back to the hallway. I guess we'll talk to Lada. I'm gonna ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really gonna shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lada, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? What an unbearable collection. Ooh, I see what chat did there. Well, kinda, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the whole time, you know. Hold a few stars around. Got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them, too. Soda pop, there you go. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. Security lady also wasn't in the hallway the whole time, either. Guess this means there's no one who could tell us who came and went that night. Scandal. So, about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that diddy I wrote? Yeah. I believe what you've written. You mean the stuff about on guard shoving his manager lady onto Corita? Yeah. Uh, well, I reckon you'll best not be believing that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bull dooters. Bull dooters. Wow, that is a phrase. I would dot 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 that too. Hey, what's with y'all? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Uh oh, used to. A lot of more shenanigans. Yeah, I'm sure they. I'm sure they did that for sure. I think they did make a shenanigan pun earlier. I could be thinking of the other game. Hmm. I think they called her a lot of trouble. Hey, when do I look like you suddenly got older too? Oh, excuse me, let me try this again. And hey, why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um. Camera. Oh, my baby. My $1,600 baby. What's with that red-coated prosecutor anyhow? Guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey, you're that Redcoat's friend, aren't you? I wonder if that's on purpose that she's calling him a Redcoat. Like, aside from, like, the history connotations, but I wonder if it's also him being, like, turncoat against the other prosecutors. Maybe it'll have a double meaning in this episode. Let's put in a few good words for me and give me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours, and I guarantee he'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. Tabloid photographer photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out here. Out there, you hear? Coming to see you in court tomorrow. Okay. I'll see you there then. Oh no, don't let her go to court. I beg of you, please no. Mercy. And you two there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. Make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. If you happen to find out yourself a camera, make sure you bring it right to me, you. Would you please just leave already? Oh. So she wasn't related to the case at all. I I I didn't have to talk to her. That's but that's not fair. That's not fair. Why can't I go to living room? Or 22nd and Garden Mansion living room. Hmm, sure is dark. 
I'll go turn on a light. Whoa. That is a room. Wow, so this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shoe the kitty cat. Shoe? Shoe meows. So I guess this is Shoe. Oh, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shoe. Cat goes meow. Tee hee. Cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. Uh oh, chat. Uh oh. May I help you with something, Mr. Oh, uh, we're lawyers, actually. I'm Mr. Ungard's lawyer. The masters, then you must be Mr. Wright. Yes. Ah, a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. <laughs> okay. Right, chat? Okay, unidentified person. Nice to meet you. Cat goes meow. I guess I'll talk to allegedly John Doe. Big sigh from chat. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir. I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master of it. Of the master or his affairs. Hmm. Not typically butler like, as it were. John Doe. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. <clears throat> dot, dot, dot. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I thought Mr. Engard the kind of to have a maid over a butler. Let's talk about Shu. It's a very cute cat you got there. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies Shu. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of a family cat. Well then, as I don't need this piece of scrap anymore. Matt's note crumpled into a ball and thrown away. Well... I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, I wanted to actually sh Oh, I wanted to show my attorney's badge into the very obvious calling card. Oh, I feel cheated. Oh, Chad, I don't want to redo it to get to this point. I'm so annoyed. I should have predicted he would leave. Oh, we should probably get ourselves going. Oh, still young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. There's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler. Charge of the house and all. Sorry, chat. I did miss the attorney badge. I didn't realize he was going to go, but I could have predicted that. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Let's examine the motorcycle. Uh, a giant bicycle's flying through the air. A bicycle, Pearls, is one where you don't have to pedal. It moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. It's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor, then. I'll show you one when you do. But we were already... We already went there. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around to have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ugh. It's with me and feeling inferior today. Maya feels confused. Ah, there are masks here. Yeah. The one in the middle is the seal samurai. One's next to the, the pink princess and the evil magistrate. I fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo Old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Seal Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know about that show than a kid. Let's look at the door. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. Then it's for Mr. Ungard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? The door. It's locked tight. Well, guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Chat. Hmm. 
Good thing Maya doesn't hear us. There's another door over there. You should go wandering around over there, Mr. Nick. Yeah, pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. Okay, so nothing we could do here. So what does the game want me to do? Do I go to criminal affairs? It's the only thing I think I haven't done. March 22nd, police station, criminal affairs. Wow, everybody looks like they're really busy with something or another. Hmm, probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's case. Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass the victims list around. You gotta be kidding, there's over a hundred people here. Uh, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. God really that big and bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It's like they're working on a different case. So nothing to do here either. So I'm clearly missing something. What did I miss? Hmm. I thought we talked to everybody. Uh. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Hmm. Maybe I present the card to him? Oh yeah, do you know about this card? R. Edgeworth for some reason went pale the instant he saw the card. Hey, I know what this is, pal. You do? No matter what way you look at it, I'd say it's a picture of a shell. Um, that's it? Oh yeah, that's right. Mr. Edgeworth really likes those cooked snail things. Um, what are they called again? Escargot or something like that. Mr. Nick. I think we just solved the mystery of why Mr. Edgeworth's face turned pale, right? As I suspected, Gumshoe was no clue. Uh... Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Is there something I'm missing? What do we do? Is it... I'm assuming it's not at the hottie clinic, clinic or I'll be very sad. Uh, we went to the living room. There's nothing else to do there. Is there something I have to re-explore in this room or something? Wow. Random jump scare as I go through the door. It, it almost got my heart rate to increase. This is very rude. I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. What is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Ugh, it startled me. I was gonna die for a second. 8 p.m.? That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? I'm sure flies. I do believe it's been two days since the ceremony. Wait, so I had to leave and come back? Was that the solution? Oof. Yeah, John, I guess you could say they're really clawing uh, their way through the investigation phase of this one. That felt kind of nonsense to revisit the place I just came from with no additional evidence. Beep, 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 chat. The transceiver. Beep. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I've heard the news, so it seemed my present did you no good. No! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is one more day. I, I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's alright. All right, it's then a little... What's with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems bad. Lots of hisses. Connect. Damn it. Did transceiver suddenly break? Yes. Excuse me. 
What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. Ah, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? Probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Okay, so... I'm guessing what is happening is electronic interference in the room that we're in. So maybe there's something else in one of the bears that's causing this to happen? I'll think about that a bit more as we go further. Let's go to the hall. I'm gonna try to give it to Gumshoe because he had the metal detector, so maybe he will give us something to do with this. Oops, wrong place. March 22nd, writing company law offices. Hey, welcome back, pal. Thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. That's nice, thanks. Rich man's luxurious full course meal. Out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. Whoops. Looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding. Here, I thought he'd already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There's one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. Uh, well, I don't think it would be Andrews that would have brought something here. I doubt Juan would bug himself. So I'm assuming that this is... Potentially Matt on guard bugging the room for something. Although I would love to know the reason he would do that. That seems really stupid given that... He hired somebody to go there. I mean, it's, does he think he can blackmail a killer? That seems really stupid. I mean, I'm not going to rule it out, but like... I will be very disappointed if it goes that way. I'm hoping there's something I haven't seen, but I don't understand how it would be any of these other characters that are in the profiles. Butler of Avant-Garde Mansion, but for some reason I get the feeling we've met before. Yeah. Let's present to him the transceiver. The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh yeah, this thing just suddenly up and broke all of a sudden. It... it broke, pal. When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself. That's strange. I'm sure it's making a, large, a loud static noise. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference. Okay, so that's what I was thinking it was. Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? Something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, we put it that way. I understand what you're talking about. Like for example, when a cell phone goes off to goes off next to a computer screen, stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? We taught you those words, Gumshoe. Huh? Computer? Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, yeah. TV does do that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. <clears throat> so that room you were in when the interference... Oh, excuse me. So the room you were in when the interference to the transceiver happened. There's got to be something out there that's sending out very strong radio signals, pal. Excuse me, radio waves. Something like, hmm, like a listening device or something. Ah, hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Carretti's room, the scene of the murder. What? That's it, I'm gonna sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. Meet you at the crime scene later, all right, pal? Oh, wait, Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. 
I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! We should get going too, Mr. Nick. All right, let's go. Well, I don't have anything else to do, so I'm just gonna go there. Chat seeing me trying to navigate the many menus to go one location. Here we go. Get rid of hotel, Karuda's hotel room. So chat, what do, you, what do you, okay. So based off of this screen and the next screen, where would you want the camera to be? Do you want the camera to be in the clock that was talking earlier? Or do you want camera to be in the literal giant bear? <laughs> what do you feel in chat? In your heart, where do you want that bug to be? Because you know it's going to be in a, in, a, in a bear. It's inevitable. Literal giant bear. Nice. Let's see if that happens. Hey, you're finally here, pal. Sorry to keep you waiting. There's also the robot dog on the far right. Do you have the, um... Bug sweeper? <laughs> the laptop? That would also be funny. Play with the expectations. Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. Then suddenly I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. Didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. Looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh? By who? Me, of course. Aw, oh, seeing this short brings back memories. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into the building into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work, trust me, pal. It'll do the job, but. But. But you can't set the sensitivity. That's gonna beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh ho ho ho! Oh ho ho! Oh ho ho! Well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well just give it a whirl, right, pal? Getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. Is this any device or some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal? So we're gonna find it, right? Right. Now, first, let's turn on the sweeper. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough look-see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up. Just keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's given off a lot of radio waves, press enter to lock onto it. There's a lot here that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at every anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? All right. I'm gonna go and stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug, got it, pal? I love the phone. Oh gosh, the growling bear. She's asking if it's a real robot. I'm just going through the joke dialogue. Uh-oh, chat. This is this is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? There we go. It was the giant bear. Good call, chat. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet. But this bear's eye is. Let's see. Let's see. Perfectly normal stuffed bear. <laughs> Perfectly normal? What? <laughs> With some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's take this big eye, big fella's eye out and see what we got. No, you can't. Such a violent act. Mm. Rip. No. That's. It's a miniature camera. It looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what a what a meter? A transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high-tech stuff? Let's talk. Camera. This tiny thing is a camera? Yup, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So, it's a video camera. 
The bear is made of crime. Smokey would be disappointed. Poor giant bear. Runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. It's only the camera part here, pal. Tape recorder with the tape inside it somewhere else. It's almost like maybe there's a giant satellite dish in someone's home that's connected to a VCR to record it. It's almost like that could be anywhere, chat. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and then it's sent to that recorder. So, it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. It's my camera added to the court record. Let's go to transmitter. So, what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. Sounds like my room, oh no. Looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. <clears throat> oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yup, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m. This time the award ceremony ended. <clears throat> There's no date set. So it's been recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Changes the footage taken by the spy camera into radio waves and transmit the data. Transmitter added to the court record. Stuff bear. So there was a camera in this bear's eye. It was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Karita this present? I, uh, I don't know, pal. Ooh, excuse me. But this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we could find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Many ways can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? Stuff bear added to the court record. The spy camera was set in the right eye, found in the victim's room. I got it! What? Hey, pal. Let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go around to the electronic shops and see who I can find who bought this. Oh, see if I can find who bought this, excuse me. But that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. You don't have to search all night. I'll find your man, pal. Spy camera and transmitter given to Detective Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! He's gone. Yeah. Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most efficient ways, right? I'm assuming this is Edgeworth. Ah! Love to excuse me. Heard your conversation just now. E Edgeworth, what are you doing here? Rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic. We have to move forward one step at a time. I see, thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You were a one lucky man, right? Huh? Do you know the stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm, of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade. Only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like that could be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Did you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. 
Hmm. It's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. Huh? I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. He's just taking the bear. Stuff bear snatched up by Edgeworth. See you soon, right? Wait! What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right? Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Carrida? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. I would dot 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 that too, Edgeworth. Yeah, I'm not like... <laughs> Does he like carry it over his shoulders? Does he like tilt it back and drag it awkwardly out? Like how does he get the bear out of this room? By himself. I imagine it's kind of heavy because it's stuffed. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. I mean, look at it. It's able to stand on its own, too. One card is real killer. Miss Andrew's past. The kidnapper whose soul condition is an acquittal for Mr. Unguard, who totally didn't react to you mentioning the transceiver earlier in jail. And this card, Shelly the Killer. Oh, the name is so bad. Although maybe John Doe is worse. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth, but as you said, all I can do now is find the truth. Alright, we're gonna take a break here, chat. I feel like we went on for quite a while. My voice is definitely feeling it right now. So we're apparently still not done with the investigation, so that confirms it. So we have more investigation to look forward to next time. Let's chat a little bit. How do we feel the session went? Well... We managed to not bomb anything in the court, despite not recalling how to do this. So we are doing okay blind, surprisingly. I think it helps that I basically know start to finish where it's going. I mean, the camera for me, I guess, was like a small twist. I didn't really have any reason to think there was a camera involved in the case. But it doesn't really open up any new plot holes for me. It's more like... Yeah, okay, he did it. It's stupid. I guess we're going to out him in front of the killer or something. So that way justice will be served another way or something. Things happen. There were bears and a cat, pretty much. So I don't think I have really too much else to add. I think we're making some solid progress. There's a lot of dialogue lines. I'm going to have to bring more to drink next time. I had a full... Like, two glasses worth of water and half a cup of something earlier, and I, I'm completely dry. And now my voice is cracking a bit due to it. So many pairs of glasses broken, exactly. So yeah, it looks like we are pretty much on track for beating it before April. Or, I guess technically might be the first day of April, I forget how it goes there. Welcome, Nate, thank you for saying I'm awesome. But unfortunately, we're gonna have to say goodbye to YouTube. Yeah, the hydration. I was thinking of taking a break, and I'm like, you know what? We're going to be stopping anyway. It'll be fine. So with that, we're going to say thank you for watching. I hope to see you again in the next part. So long, YouTube.